Can you imagine a bird that has managed to survive and thrive on planet Earth for 65 million years, whose ancient ancestors survived massive geological and environmental change, including the actual movement of continents across the globe, volcanoes, floods, hurricanes, an ever-changing climate, and more. But then, in the tiniest little blink of a cosmic eye, in just the last 100 years, that bird is suddenly threatened with extinction. This is penguins in the Anthropocene, which is our current geological age, defined by the impact that human beings are having on the planet. And for penguins, this includes everything from industrial pollution to overfishing, habitat destruction, oil spills, introduced predators, plastics pollution, and much more. Our current modern penguins began evolving about 30 million years ago. And until humans came along with everything I just mentioned, they were plugging along just fine. During the last century, their populations crashed dramatically. And the closer we get to our current point in time, the faster these birds are disappearing. According to the IUCN, 13 of the 18 penguin species are currently listed as threatened or endangered. And some could go extinct within our lifetimes. Now, the top threats to penguins today are global warming, followed by overfishing. And nearly every penguin species is being impacted by these two things, whether they live in Antarctica or at the equator. But let's start in Antarctica, where four penguin species routinely live and breed. The Antarctic Peninsula, where millions of penguins raise their chicks every year, is warming faster than any place in the southern hemisphere. Over the last 50 years, average temperatures there have risen by five and a half degrees Fahrenheit, or three degrees Celsius. And this has led to a marked increase in precipitation and a decrease in reproductive success for some of the penguins there. Now, many people know that penguins are being impacted by climate change, but not many people know exactly how they're being affected. So I'd like to share a few specific examples with you. I took this photo on my first trip to Antarctica in 2009, and these adorable little balls of fluff are gentoo penguin chicks. Now, they haven't grown in their waterproof feathers yet, and their downy fluff doesn't protect them from the elements. And it was cold and windy and raining this day, and these poor chicks were just shivering uncontrollably. And I just remember being so shocked in this moment, because in all of my lifelong imaginings about Antarctica, not once did I ever imagine it would be raining there. But rain is now a regular occurrence on the peninsula and it's becoming more and more frequent. When the temperature drops, which can happen in a heartbeat there, these chicks can freeze to death. So in East Antarctica, one Adelie penguin colony recently suffered catastrophic breeding failure when extremely heavy rains flooded their nests. And this was then followed by freezing temperatures and a lack of food. In two recent seasons, out of 80,000 chicks born at this one colony, only two chicks survived. Two out of 80,000. Now, this rapid warming has also caused some of the sea ice and ice shelves around Antarctica to retreat and break apart earlier than normal. Now, this is problematic because this ice serves as a giant nursery and all-you-can-eat buffet for Antarctic krill. So the krill feed on the krill larvae, feed on phytoplankton, which in turn feeds on the algae that grows on the bottom surface of this ice. So less ice means less krill, which means less food for the penguins. And the penguins are also competing with massive krill fisheries that have drastically reduced the population of krill there. Now, the iconic emperor penguin had uses the top of the ice as their nursery. But when that ice melts back early to their breeding grounds and the chicks are forced into the ocean before they've grown in their waterproof feathers, they can drown. And recently, at one colony, every chick was lost this way three seasons in a row. Let's go now to the penguins living at the most northerly latitude of all the penguins. The Galapagos penguin lives on the Galapagos Islands, which straddle the equator. And these 
birds are now highly endangered with just 600 pair left. And they are especially vulnerable to El Nino events. So here's why. Normally, a cold ocean current comes up from the south and cools the air and water around the islands, and it brings a rich supply of fish for the penguins to eat. But in an El Nino year, that current along the equator gets reversed. And what happens is that warm waters from the west get pushed backwards towards the islands, displacing that cold current along with all that fish, causing many penguins to overheat and starve. And in two severe El Ninos alone, 75% of the species died from starvation in each event. And the species has never recovered from this. And we have all witnessed how the increase in climate change has caused an increase in both the severity and frequency of damaging storms, including hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and El Ninos. And just one extreme event could spell disaster for this penguin. So what steps are scientists taking to help ensure the future survival of these charismatic seabirds? The main approach is to try and boost their numbers. Strategies include raising chicks, restoring habitat, policy change, and funding conservation initiatives. And here are a few examples of some of these in action. So every year, SANCOB, the leading penguin rescue center in South Africa, rescues and hand raises hundreds of chicks that have been abandoned by their parents when food availability is low. And over the last 16 years, they have successfully raised 10 thousand African penguins. Yay, sand cob. <laughs> so, and this is really critical because that 10,000 is one third of the global population of this highly endangered species now. So they are now looking to build a larger penguin nursery so they can raise even more penguin chicks. Now, another initiative is the establishment of new breeding colonies closer to rich foraging grounds because the waters near the penguins' historic islands are now depleted of fish. So many of these chicks that are raised at San Cobb are being released into these new locations. This one is Betty's Bay. And at another nearby location, they've installed carved penguin decoys and speakers playing recorded penguin calls, which have actually worked to draw new adult penguins to the colonies, which was their goal. And then in places where penguins live in hot climates, researchers have installed artificial breeding caves. And this helps the parents keep them from overheating in the sun and then abandoning their, their chick to go for a swim. And it also provides physical protection by making it much harder for a predator to grab a chick out of a nest. And uh, policy change that is helping some penguins is the creation of marine reserves near their colonies. So when the penguins' foraging grounds are closed off to fishing, the penguins are then able to find enough food to feed both themselves and their chicks, boosting reproductive success and staving off starvation. So here is the bottom line. Penguins are an indicator species, and they are very loudly and very clearly alerting us to the health of the oceans they live in. And simply put, if penguins are dying, it means our oceans are dying. So can we, as individuals, communities, corporations, and foundations, do anything to keep these birds from disappearing forever? I believe we can and we must. As environmental stewards, it is our responsibility to now undo the damage uh, of human activities. Here are some things that you can do, we all can do, to help penguins survive. Reduce your reliance on fossil fuel, and this includes reducing your use of plastics because they are made from fossil fuels. Voting for politicians, both locally and federally, who are serious about doing something about climate change and supporting penguin conservation groups and projects like the ones I just told you about. And you can find them along with an extensive personally vetted list of all these groups at thepenguinlady.com. And ultimately, you can help penguins simply by caring and by taking any one or all three of these steps to help ensure they'll be around for generations to come. And to do that, we must protect them, and we must protect their beautiful but fragile blue home. Thank you. <laughs>